Well, the Quebec Liberal Party has pulled ahead in the polls in Quebec. What's going on? We all thought the PQ was going to call an election because they knew they could win hands down. So Kevin uh, Woodhouse joins us, Montreal uh, political pundit and the suburban reporter. Kevin, good to see you. Uh, thanks for having me, Pat. Okay, what is going on? Why are the Liberals pulling ahead? Um, good question. Uh, a lot of people talking about perhaps the Mr. Pellino effect when he uh, raised his arm uh, that Sunday uh, to announce that uh, we want our own country. Um, I think the uh, PQ had sort of hoped that this captain of industry would bolster their ranks in terms of, uh, you know, giving them uh, value towards the uh, economic portfolio. But uh, this seems to be the reverse trend. Uh, also, what's happening, too, is uh, the CAQ are slipping. Uh, it's really becoming, it looks like it's becoming right now, at day 14, a, a two-party race between the PQ and the, uh, and the Liberal Party. Okay, but it would suggest, are people leaving the CAQ to go to the PCs, or, or to the Liberals, I mean? Yes, sir. That's that's exactly what's happening. If we look at today's uh, if we look at today's uh, uh, latest uh, polls, it was 39 for the Liberals. They got a bump. Uh, the the PQ are at 36, sort of not moving too much, and it's the CAQ now at 13, 14 percent. They were 20 percent in 2012, and ever since they've just been steadily going down, which must be a frustration for Mr. Legault, who's running a fairly gaff-free campaign so far. Okay, Kevin. Then here's the question: Do Quebecers want a referendum? <laughs> no, sir. Uh, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, in the latest polls, two-thirds of Quebecers, uh, non-francophones uh, and francophones, are not interested in returning to that, uh, in returning to a referendum or discussing sovereignty. Um, I think people are perhaps realizing that with a $176 billion debt, uh, Quebec is the most indebted province, and uh, in the last 18 months of the PQ minority government, there wasn't really a lot of discussion about how the economy would be improved in any way, shape, or form. We were, you know, it was Bill 14, then it was Bill 60, and now they're trying to talk about it on the campaign trail, whereas uh, I think a lot of Quebecers are seeing this as too little too late. Although there is 20 days left in the campaign, this could be a, a, a trend uh, that, that, that makes the Liberal Party this morning quite pleased, quite, but, uh, quite happy with themselves. I assume, though, that the Francophones are still uh, supporting the PQ? I beg your pardon, sir? I assume that the Francophone community, if you will, is still supporting the PQ? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, they still have, uh, of the Francophone votes, they still have 43% of intended voters. So um, I, I would imagine that they're not too worried as of yet, but uh, so the, the, the strength for the, the Francophone vote, I think, is still there. But uh, I would imagine that the, the PQ are probably having some uh, interesting discussions today, even though Madame Marois says that she doesn't concern herself with polls. Yeah, everybody pays attention to polls. Coming. Absolutely, That's the reality. absolutely. Uh, I wonder if it's working. The liberal tactic, as I could glean from the papers, was kind of like if you're scared, join the liberals. Uh, I think that's that's what's really happening. Uh, what basically Mr. Cuillard is saying, if you want uh, economic prosperity, then it's time to come to the Liberal Party. If you're looking for stagnation, referendum, sovereignty, other, uh, you know, Bill 14, Bill 60 issues, stick with the PQ. And I think for the CAQ, there's no wedge for them. Um, Mr. Legault, of course, was a, you know, a former separatist who says that he won't hold a referendum for the next 10 years. Maybe the fact that he says I won't hold one for 10 years is too much for Quebecers right now. Now. Yeah, I wonder why the PQ doesn't have more currency as far as the economy is concerned, because, you know, you get somebody like Pierre Carpellado showing up. He's a businessman. Absolutely. Uh, the, the only problem, uh, sir, is w what people are seeing is, you know, a, a lot of people see him as sort of a, a, a good businessman, but not great towards his employees. Uh, for instance, he's had several lockouts. The, the famous one in Montreal was the Journal de Montréal. Workers were locked out for over two years. So he's not really seen as the Capitaine Quebec uh, or a job creator, but more of, uh, of someone who the unions are, are a little wary of, uh, of him right now. And I think that's why th they didn't get the Pellet bounces, which which is probably what the PQ expected when they announced them. Okay, now as I understand it, there is a debate coming up. Uh, how much of a difference will that make in terms of the personalities and people either resonating with them or not? 
Well, that's an excellent question, and the reason is because uh, while uh, Quebecers do, uh, you know, tend to be involved or at least, uh, you know, show some interest in in uh, in the political um, in in the elections, uh, debates are usually the polarizing for a lot of people, particularly for those who are undecided. Uh, right now, we're sitting at about 15 to 16 percent of Quebecers who are undecided about who they're going to vote for. So, for a lot of them, a good uh, a good debate from either leader or a poor showing. Could have, could have, could give uh, either someone a bounce or a, or a, or a, or a drop. But it would suggest, Kevin, that they pay more attention to personality than they do to policy. Uh, it's funny you say that. Uh, we, we discussed that in our in our newsroom when the election began. I mean, we have the largest debt in in Canada, the province of Quebec is the largest debt, and uh, we're also uh, you know there's been no real job creation. As a matter of fact, uh, if you look at statistics, uh, thousands of jobs were gained in Ontario, thousands of jobs, full time jobs were lost in Quebec. No one was saying anything, and and we're wondering, and maybe we're thinking now now that uh, the topic is on uh, you know Quebec and its future. Maybe people are keying into the fact that, you know, taxes are too high, uh, uh, full-time jobs are hard to come by. And I think for a lot of um, older, uh, older uh, Quebecers, they're worried about their 20 to 25-year-old children. Are they going to be afford, can they afford to, A, stay in Quebec and get a job in Quebec? So I, I think that that's a concern for people as well. Yeah, is it ever. Kevin, great to talk to you. Thanks so much. Absolute pleasure. Uh, we'll see you soon. Okay.